Welcome to the third Monday Madness. I can't believe we're already in the third week of covering what has caught my attention on the internet this week. Now, this is also the show for you guys as well. For those of you who tune into the live broadcast, you can share with me details in the live chat or indeed use the super chat and let me know what has caught your attention on the internet and then I will search it in this very broadcast and we will talk about the subjects that you want to talk about as well. But to get things started, I want to jump into something that's captured my attention and share that with you. So the first thing is an Apple announcement. Not an, not a new product, this is an existing product. Let's take a look and I'll share with you exactly what I'm talking about. Now I shared this with you actually on the previous broadcast of Monday Madness and it was about the delivery times improving uh, for the iPhone 10 or iPhone X as some people are referring to it. Now the good news is that with some of the 64 gigabyte versions of the iPhone 10, you can actually reserve and pick up either same day or next day in the Apple Store. And this applies both to the UK and USA markets. I'm not sure about other countries, but I assume that things are improving in all countries regarding availability of the iPhone 10. And then the other good news is that the 256 gigabyte version of the iPhone 10 has also improved with regard to availability, and you can actually order that online and take delivery within about seven business working days, which is a big improvement uh, from the previous delivery times that customers were actually experiencing. So that's the first thing I want to talk to you about. Let's jump straight away into the live chat, which is what all of these broadcasts are about, and say a big, big thank you to Jessica, Scroofy's Mod, Scott Burgess, Raymond Moore, BB Buddies Bits, and Joy Deep for tuning in. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you've got any questions at all, then please do pop them down in the live chat. Or indeed, if you want your comment or question highlighted to capture my attention, then please do use the super chat feature as well. So let's jump into the next uh, piece that I want to talk to you about. Before I do that, I will just remind you if there's anything in particular you want me to cover in this broadcast, then do that, put that in the chat as well, and I'll try and cover that in this very broadcast. So moving on to the second piece I want to talk to you about, and this is really interesting because of late we've seen a lot of smartphone manufacturers uh, actually uh, developing new technologies, including getting rid of fingerprint sensors. Yes, we're talking about you, Apple. Uh, so we started off with having to unlock our devices with a pin code, or we could unlock them with a password. Then things moved on where we could unlock them with a pattern on the screen. Not the best way of unlocking, I must add, because you can see the pattern that people draw time and time again on their screens. Then we moved over to fingerprint sensors. We had some sort of facial recognition as well in Samsung's phones. And then Apple, as we all know, with the iPhone 10, got rid of the fingerprint sensor completely, and now it's face ID unlock and indeed on the OnePlus 5T that I'm using personally you can unlock that with either a fingerprint, a pin code, a password or indeed your face. Uh, not quite as uh, robust face recognition as what Apple are giving us but that is an option on the OnePlus 5T. Well the news here from Engadget uh, is that Samsung are putting in palm reading technology into their new smartphones. We could see this in a future Samsung Galaxy S10. I don't think it's gonna make it into the S9, whereby just picking up your smartphone may enable it to read the actual print on your palm and unlock your device. Now, admittedly, the diagram you're seeing on your screen now uh, is actually showing you uh, the camera being used, so it's at quite a distance. But if they can make this technology uh, to work in close proximity, so when you pick up your smartphone, it's actually reading your palm and unlocking the device. How cool would that be? This as a future technology could be very, very good indeed. So, what do you guys think of that? Would you really appreciate a new technology to unlock your smartphone just by picking it up, just by touching your palm? I think that would be very, very cool. And if it's secure enough, 
could be a really good way of building that into the back of the smartphone. No longer do you have to put the fingerprint sensor on the side or on the back and have people arguing about what the ideal position is. It's just a matter of picking up your smartphone and it unlocking. Very, very cool indeed. Uh, life's life saying anyone got iOS 11.2 on their devices. I personally didn't upgrade. I do have a good friend that upgraded and he texted me very, very annoyed. He was not happy at all. He was having so many crashes after doing the update. He even did a complete restore and was still getting crashes. It seems that with every update, Apple fixed some things but adding new problems for users as well. So not a good experience at all for the friend of mine. I've also seen a lot of problems talked about online. So that isn't great news for iOS users this week. Uh, Scott Burgess says, I watched your video on your new Microsoft Surface Pro the other day and was wondering what you can do on that that you can't do on your iPad Pro. One of the main things that you can do that you can't do on the iPad Pro with the Surface Pro is install full applications, desktop quality applications, things like the full version of Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Character Animate, uh, InDesign, etc, etc cannot be installed on the iPad Pro. Also, it's a lot easier to get it to ingest media. That's one of the other benefits I've experienced so far. And it really is a desktop experience rather than a tablet experience. Now, that's not to say the iPad Pro isn't good. I personally own an iPad Pro. And for drawing, up to a certain extent, it is superb. For content creation, up to a certain extent, it is superb. The issues I had with the iPad Pro was not being able to ingest media. So things like footage, video footage from my camera uh, was a real problem. And with something like the Surface Pro, you could install Adobe Premiere Pro or Premiere Elements or another video editor and quite easily edit a video on there. I know you can do that on the iPad Pro, but there are some compromises along the way. Great question though, very, very good question. Uh, Ian DeRosa also uh, chimes in with so much in answer to uh, that question. I use Photoshop on the Surface and having a PC and tablet in one is so much more convenient. So there is that convenience factor as well. And Raymond Moore also asks, Dave, what are your thoughts on the innovation of the ZTE Axon M phone? Forgive me if I'm wrong, is this the one with the dual screens? If it is, don't like it. Don't like it at all. And also Jessica Redmond's Apple iPhone 7 Plus, what colour looks the best? It's a very personal opinion, Jessica. Uh, I liked my gold iPhone 7 Plus. A lot of people absolutely hated that colour. So it really is a personal opinion. It depends what colour your other devices are and what draws your attention. So really sit down, have a think what really appeals to you in terms of colour. There's no better one than the other. It's a very individual choice. So anyway, let's move on to the next uh, topic for today's Monday Madness. Now, these aren't all necessarily wow moments, apart from this one, which really did impress me. Now, this website, the source is DP Review, and as with all of the articles and bits I'm discussing today, the links will be down in the video description area if you want to check them out for yourself. So credit to the source DP Review here. Also credit to the photographer here, which is Michael Shaneblum. Uh, there is actually links in the article to his website, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. So please do check it out and uh, give him credit for this photo. This is gazing at the Milky Way over Trisim, uh, I, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, in the Dolomites. Uh, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous image. I'm not going to zoom it up to full screen for you here. I want you to check out the actual article, zoom it up to full screen, look at this in all its glory. It was taken with the Sony A7S with the Canon uh, 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. It was actually created by conver converting or combining, I should say, eight vertical images into one image. And it is just stunning. It, uh, this mesmerizes me. This was one of those wow moments at the beginning of this week. Uh, a very nice way to start the week off, seeing both creativity, uh, expertise in capturing this moment, and just the awe of this photo is absolutely amazing i could look at this for a good half an hour and still pick out more detail it's so beautifully shot it almost looks like a painting 
It really does. It's a very, very nice image. And it's when I see things like this that really want me to get out with my camera and take more photographs. Uh, it's just a, just to behold an image like that, to actually be able to envisage visiting somewhere and seeing that myself is wow. It is just one of those wow moments. And I just want to say a big, big thank you to the photographer because I haven't seen that with my naked eye. But the image that the photographer captured, captured there, Michael, uh, just allowed me to enjoy that moment myself. And I think that really is what photography is about, being able to capture that moment, obviously enjoy it yourself because you're there in person, but then you've captured that split second and you've got that moment forever in that image. And then being able to share it with other, others and for them to be transfixed and amazed by the image or to even build their own story around it if if it doesn't convey a, a, the, the original story is just amazing it is amazing and that is what makes photography great obviously videography tells a story as well where i create my videos for the geek and noise channel these live broadcasts are a moment in time that we're sharing together uh, a photograph is a snapshot in time that probably won't happen the same ever again it is just amazing it is really really cool so remember, before I move on to the next topic, uh, Ian DeRosa is saying, are you getting the Xbox One X? I still haven't ordered it. I do intend to. I've just been so, so busy. So extremely busy with the uh, broadcasts, with doing all of the smartphone reviews. I've been uh, busy moving across to Android. I was just silencing the phone at the moment. Still absolutely loving the OnePlus 5T. Really enjoying it. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, I've moved away from iOS and am now using the OnePlus 5T and Google Android and really enjoying it, getting to grips with it. I've had a lot of tips from you guys, the viewers, on to how to get the most out of my experience. Uh, loving the camera, just loving the whole thing. Really very good. And just an update for you on this. Uh, since I did my review, which was a week into using this, the battery life is still rock solid. Very, very good experience with the battery life. Uh, Raymond Moore, what photography channels that you? What are the photography channels that you follow on YouTube, Dave? Uh, well, I used to watch DRTV, but I watched it more for Kai uh, or Kaiman, as his full name is, but more for Kai, the presenter, and of course Locke. Uh, they left and are now doing their own thing, so I watch both Kai and Locke. Uh, I also watch Camera Store TV on occasion and Tony Northrup on occasion as well. And that's pretty much it. There are various videos I watch along the way. Uh, one of them is to do with the last topic I want to talk to you about in a short while. Um, but when there's a new product to come out and some people get early hands on with products, I might watch those. But pretty much the channels that I named earlier. Um, Morgan Wright, I once saw the Northern Lights in Iceland. Uh, was impressive took a photo of it as well wow that is amazing i would love to see the northern lights i really would that is very very cool that must have been such a, a magical memorable time and a lot of people talk to me about what would i prefer to do buy a piece of technology or go on holiday or do this uh, with a piece of technology or spend time with my family and i, I would rather spend time creating those memories um, rather than just uh, playing a game for example and if at all like a, a camera can enable me to do that then that's acceptable but but experience in the moment i see a lot of people nowadays holding their iphone up and they're maybe videoing the the fireworks and they're looking at it through the screen and they're missing what's going on around them uh, i think that's a big shame as well experience the moment it's, it's really important that you create those memories for yourself uh, Ian DeRosa says, do you think you will switch to a Windows PC in the future? Uh, lol, if Apple continues this mediocrity trend. Uh, never say never, but I don't see it happening very soon. I'm so tied in to doing my broadcasts on here, doing my client videos using Final Cut Pro 10, uh, Adobe Photoshop, which I know you can use on Windows as well. But I'm so happy with uh, the setup I've got at the moment. But who knows, things might change. Uh, virtual reality isn't well supported on Mac OS and that's something I really want to experience a lot more uh, so maybe there will be more of a Windows uh, type of content on the channel and more of a Windows experience for me somewhere along the line including of course with the Surface Pro 
which I almost forgot, you know, so I'm experiencing it there. I still got the Alienware PC. I still use that as well. So, you know, I've got both platforms. I'm in that lucky position of having both platforms to use, but all of my creation is done on Mac OS and I can't see that changing at the moment. So anyway, let's have a look at this sort of final topic, which is in fact sort of two things in one. Uh, but let me switch over to the desktop view again. And I want to show you this. This is the Leica CL. And the main thing that I want to draw your attention to with the Leica CL is in fact another article from DP Review. Uh, DP Review have actually shared this really cool article saying Leica camera reports strong revenue growth for 2016-2017 fiscal year. So they're uh, growing their revenue by 6% despite the global camera market declining by around 10%. So while the camera market was declining, Leica were in fact growing their income and their revenue, which is really good news. And, and I put this down to uh, mainly one thing, which is that, that Leica really create cameras that people want to experience. It's, it's all about the history of the brand, that Leica look in the photos, the control, you're getting a real sort of manual feeling camera. Uh, something that disappears and the tool that you're using becomes an extension of you and you still capture great photos. And I think they've made a, a change in the way they're doing their cameras of late. Uh, first of all, they launched the Leica TL2, which wasn't that long ago. And this is an APS-C size sensor camera. And I think the reason they did this was to appeal to a more uh, modern day market. And it was all about the touchscreen, as well as, of course, the, the sensor and the optics as well. And, of course, the processor or the way the photos are rendered. But it was trying to get people to move across to a touchscreen camera. Uh, still interchangeable lenses. Uh, really good specification. It turned out to not be that successful or um, uh, not that popular in terms of the whole sort of camera industry. But it certainly opened people's eyes to how things could be done and how Leica could give us uh, a modern day take on their cameras. Now this particular one, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, look at this design as well. Wow, it looks absolutely fantastic. You could add on a, um, a viewfinder here, so VisoFlex viewfinder, which gave you really uh, good ergonomics, and you could take this off if you wanted to, and you had a very pocketable camera. Yeah, they also gave us HDMI and USB 3. They also gave us uh, connectivity to smartphones, and they also gave us, just up here it mentions it, uh, 4K video. So they gave us full HD and 4K video capture. And before, you wouldn't have heard of that in a Leica, apart from with their larger SL camera. So I think this has contributed towards their revenue growth because they're appealing to a younger audience. They're also appealing to an audience that are used to using touchscreens. Just recently, they also announced the Leica CL. Same internals as the TL, still interchangeable lens, still very simple controls, a very clean design as well, as you can see here. And it's just a great camera. Here's a look that they've done this sort of cross section of the camera as well, which is really cool. Uh, but this also gives us an APS-C size sensor, uh, a built-in viewfinder this time. So instead of having to add that on as an afterthought, it's actually built in, it's just in the top uh, left hand corner of the camera here. Uh, we've also got a touchscreen, although it's not a touchscreen driven uh, user interface as much. It's more of a, a touchscreen experience. The menus are still driven by buttons as far as I know. You st do still make some changes on the screen. We've also got a Wi-Fi module as well uh, and we have got HD video and uh, 4K video in here as well. And of course, the whole range of Leica lenses, you can even get an adapter to use older M-type lenses in here as well. And the point I wanted to make is, is Leica are really trying hard to appeal to a new audience. And we don't see this very often with other camera companies. Uh, we see Canon sticking to their 1080p in their lower end cameras, 4K just in their production cameras. Uh, we see uh, Nikon not really doing much in the way of innovation. Things have stayed pretty much the same for a long, long time. Uh, the only manufacturer you really see moving things along a lot uh, has been Sony. Uh, so a lot of people were switching across to Sony. Uh, we've got Panasonic though, also introducing the Panasonic G9. 
but we've never seen a company make such a big transition as Leica. Leica are a very traditional company and they've got a very um, uh, loyal user base and the colours produced by Leica, if I see a, a photo I can normally tell if it's been taken on a Leica just by the colour science used and for them to, to now introduce these new cameras that are appealing to a modern day audience, myself included, uh, is really good to see. I experienced and own a Leica Q and it is a fantastic camera. It's got a fixed lens on it but it's a marriage between the lens and the body and the sensor, full frame sensor in the Leica Q. It's just a real joy to, to take photos with and, and again the, the results are so so amazing. You really need to experience it to, to understand why people pay that premium for Leica. Some people say you're paying just for the red dot. I don't believe that at all. I think you're really paying for the colour science and how the photos look. And like I said, that extension of you, rather than it being a camera that you've got so many controls and dials, so many options, it's really sort of bared back and you've got the very minimal amount that you need to sort of get the job done. Uh, and it's a camera you enjoy taking out uh, and taking photographs with. So anyway, that is it for all of the stories I want to talk about. Let's dive back into the chat and take a look at what you've been chatting about as well. Uh, Raymond Moore, do you own any Leica cameras, Dave? The Leica Q, uh, which is really very, very good. And yeah, they are expensive. Uh, Raymond's asking why they're so expensive. That's the same as saying, why is the iPhone 10 so expensive? You know, you're paying for that build quality. Uh, with Leica, you really are getting a fantastic piece of kit, and that German engineering is amazing on them, on both the body and the optics. It really has to be experienced to understand it. Uh, we've also got here uh, Morgan Wright saying, I really like that Leica are still making film cameras, the MA and the M7, and Polaroid are back. It's fantastic. It is a good time. Indeed, I forgot about Polaroid. It is really good to see this happening. Um, we can really get wrapped up in new technology and new gear acquisition all the time. Uh, but if you look back through the history of Leica, they've been a very sensible and grounded company. They really have. Uh, and I think that's the draw. That's the, the draw for me to, to that particular brand. Uh, and they really do look after their, their customers. They really do. And their cameras. They look after their cameras and their customers. But you do pay that premium. So, are there any more questions? Let's just have a look back through the older chats and questions here. That is pretty much it for the questions at the moment. It's been a crazy beginning to the week for me. I've been very, very busy. I did a broadcast earlier uh, on a monitor, an AOC or AOC gaming monitor that was just in the background here and already I've had to move that. I'm absolutely really, really tired uh, from doing so much work today. That was a great monitor. Uh, it's just been moved at the moment. It's just sitting down there on the floor out of shot. And uh, if you want to um, uh, see that video, then please do look back. It's just the, the video prior to this particular broadcast. Uh, a really awesome 31 and a half inch uh, gaming monitor. It is absolutely amazing. So do check that out. Uh, we've also got Darren Gator. Hello to you, Darren. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I think that everyone is so used to all the dials and buttons on a camera that they do not know how to use a Leica. That is very true. Let me just switch back to um, this uh, shot of the Leica CL. There's a very, very good point. In fact, is there a better shot of it just here? There is a better photo of it just here uh, in the top right-hand corner. But you can see here that you've got very minimal dials and there's no writing on the dials there's a little tiny screen here the smallest of screens on the top look you can see it just on this image here and you turn this dial and you've also got buttons in the middle here and this one here sort of sets your mode aperture priority shutter manual uh, etc uh, and then the center button makes your selection as far as I know uh, this one here actually controls for example ISO or you can push and hold the button down and then it will control your shutter speed or you can push and hold the button down and then it will control your aperture for example simple on off switch just here and then we've got the shutter button here you'll notice there's not even a record button so accessing the video mode which is the secondary feature of this this is a photography focused camera is accessed in a totally different way and on the back 
if we got a shot of the back here we got a shot of the back just coming through here and here and it shows just three buttons for play I can't remember what the middle one is and then we've got menu button when you push the menu button this is just an example of how simple things are the menu button just a single push will bring up the favorites menu so it's not even bringing up a full menu you have to push it a second time to bring out up the more detailed menu and then of course you navigate via the four-way control here uh, and of course it's a touch screen and you can even touch to focus you can also touch to focus and take the photo uh, and it's got a built-in viewfinder it really is an amazing looking camera I'm so so tempted by it in fact the more I think about it the more I really want to experience one of these and of course the Leica CL existed before and this is the new Leica CL for the 21st century it really is an amazingly designed and engineered camera uh, I'm absolutely besotted with it I'm, it's occupying my mind a lot and that's what I've been watching videos on for a long long time uh, Raymond Moore says what can we expect for this week's broadcasts this is a very good question I don't mind sharing some of them with you I'm not going to share all of them because one of them I'm still working on uh, we have got some really amazing light bulbs I know light bulbs sound a bit boring but these are connected smart home light bulbs that don't need an external bridge they don't need any uh, extra things to be plugged into your router and I'm amazed with them the app that controls them I'm not going to tell you what brand but that particular broadcast is coming up this week and I'm also going to be bringing you have I got it here yes I have it's just sitting here let's wake this up the razor phone the razor phone has been impressing me so far there are some things I don't like on it but there's a lot I really like and I'm going to be bringing you my review of the razor phone this week as well Wow full metal body it is really very very nice indeed i have also got another broadcast later in the week and uh, not as many this week as in previous weeks because i've got so many appointments on this week but you will still see me doing the live broadcast regularly uh, i also have been using the community tab on the geek and noise channel just to get your votes as to the optimal uh, broadcasting time i'm not going to be able to please anyone the results are in and a lot of you did vote and thank you very much for that some of you voted for midday and these are all gmt times some of you voted for 4 p.m some of you voted for 6 p.m uh, there, there is no pleasing everyone but i am going to still be mixing up the broadcast time just so that i can address each and every one of you i think it's the best way going forwards uh, the Gritty Shaker, or Gritty Shaker asks, how much is the Leica CL? I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's round about... Uh, I think it's round about 2,800 for body only. Uh, this is British or GBP, so pound sterling. Um, round about that sort of mark. They also do a kit with the 18mm lens, which is a new prime lens. And they also do a kit with an 18 to 56 millimeter lens. It might be cheaper than that. Let me find it for you because I want to give you the right information. Like a CL. So the Leica CL comes in at um, £3,150. That's with the 18 millimeter lens. Uh, we've also got one with the 18 to 56 lens, which is 3,275, and it is a little bit cheaper. It's still expensive. It's a big investment. It comes in at 2,250 for body only. So very, very expensive um, investment. Uh, David Hepworth, what's the battery life like on it? I heard you get four to five hours at 120 hertz. You're referring to the Razer phone. Uh, the battery life on this has been really good I've got this set to 120 Hertz and it's been really good it's not been four to five hours it's been uh, much better than that maybe when you're hearing four to five hours it's four to five hours screen on time uh, James Baker as a fellow collector what's your favorite pop Star Wars bobblehead all my bobbleheads are up here behind me I would say it's got to be Darth Vader I really do love it you can see him just just on the shelf behind me here really do love my uh, Funko Pops I've been thinking of getting uh, the clown from it I like the design of it uh, it really uh, appeals to me as adding that to my shelf but let me know in the comment section once this video goes um, uh, into the archive 
which ones you think I should pick up next. You can share links in the comments section when this video goes on the main channel. And uh, I'd be really interested to learn uh, what you think of my little collection up there and what are your favourites as well. Uh, we've also got David Hepworth saying the Leica Q is 3,742 pounds. That is still near to the original retail price. Don't forget with the Leica Q, you're getting a really good 28 millimeter lens and it takes fantastic images, it really does. And Coffee 7 chimes in with Pennywise. I forgot the uh, the name of the clown, but it is indeed Pennywise. Uh, I just really like the Funko Pop of it. I really do. And I haven't even seen, I've seen the original It movie, but I haven't seen the new one yet. I do intend to watch that over the Christmas period. So anyway, that is it for this broad broadcast. I hope you enjoyed Monday Madness. Uh, do tune in again every Monday at 4pm GMT, where we get to discuss what we've seen on the internet. We have a good chat in the uh, super chat as well and just cover off what's happening in the world of technology i really enjoy doing these because i appreciate your uh, contribution in the live chat so we've got a new week ahead of us today is monday so take advantage of the new week new opportunities new things to do and enjoy and uh, just have a fantastic time wherever you are thank you very much for tuning in i'll see you all in the next one